Before we start, I want to thank my friends over at MassDrop for sponsoring this video. MassDrop is a group buy site where people come together and commit to buy products well below their regular price. Their products include stuff like keyboards, headphones, and other tech items. I actually check it every single day, and I bought a lot of things from MassDrop. Use my link in the description to make your own account, and it gives me a little bit of a kickback, so you'll be helping support the channel. So this is my beginner's guide on the CPU, the processor, the brains of the computer. I won't be doing an overclocking guide, I will talk about overclocking, but if you want a guide and up to date and good, like comprehensible guide, go check out Linus Tech Tips, he did a fantastic overclocking guide just a few days ago, so go check him out. So this is the Intel Pentium G3258 CPU, and it's a pretty big deal, and I'll get to explaining why by the end of this video. So let's start from the very beginning. There's two major manufacturers of CPUs. We have Intel and AMD, and they each have their different socket types. For Intel, it's something like LGA 1150 or LGA 2011, and then for AMD, it's something like AM3 Plus, Plus or FM2, or something like that. So what's the difference between Intel and AMD? Well, other than AMD having the pins on the CPU and then Intel having the pins on the motherboard, the main difference is architecture. And architecture is a tough topic to explain. If you don't know anything about CPUs at all, the best way I can explain it is like a city. Good architecture is an advanced city with a vast road network where you can get from one place to another really quickly and everything works efficiently. Bad architecture would be a city with a lot of broken roads or not good road networks. So if you wanted to get from one place to another, it would take a while and very little work gets done. So going off of that road, pun intended, let's talk about frequency or gigahertz. Gigahertz are cycles per second or how much work your CPU can do. But there is a catch here. A Intel Pentium clocked at 3.2 gigahertz could be faster than say an AMD CPU at 3.5 gigahertz. Now how is that possible? That's where architecture comes in. The Pentium can do more per cycle, so even with less cycles per second, it gets more work done than the AMD CPU. Now that's why benchmarks are so important. Benchmarks measure the performance of the CPU, not just the spec sheets, and not just synthetic benchmarks. You want to be looking at real world benchmarks like rendering times or gaming FPS, because they're measuring how well a CPU performs regardless of its architecture. And that leads us pretty well into overclocking. And overclocking is increasing your CPU's frequency, or gigahertz, past its stock clock speed. Now, for an Intel processor, generally if it has a K on the end, like 4770K, that means it is overclockable and unlocked. And almost all AMD C CPUs are unlocked and overclockable, as long as you have a compatible motherboard. And that is why this Pentium is so special, because this is the first Pentium to be unlocked and overclockable. Even though it doesn't have a K at the end of its G3258, it is overclockable, so you can raise that 3.2 gigahertz up to something like 4.0 gigahertz, or maybe even faster. So that's free performance, right? You can just put this up to 4 gigahertz and get some insanely fast speeds from a very inexpensive processor. There is definitely a catch with overclocking. With higher clock speeds and when the CPU is running faster, it's running hotter and you need more efficient and more powerful cooling to cool down that CPU and it's less stable. You need adequate parts like your motherboard that can run it at that frequency and you need to make sure that everything is working together and it's stable and you're not crashing at all. So if you're not overclocking your CPU is fast enough, just use a stock cooler or maybe a cheap $30 cooler to uh, keep things quiet in your case and you'll be good to go. But if you do want to overclock, get that extra performance, you will need a better cooler so you can cool down the CPU and keep it stable in your system. But let's get one thing straight. For most cases, the CPU speed is not as important as it may have once been. In gaming, GPU speed and the GPU raw horsepower is much more important for getting more FPS. A 4670K or say like an FX8350 is the most you will ever need for a gaming machine and then just spend the rest of the money on the GPU and you will get much better results. If you're not even gaming, an Intel i3, maybe even a Pentium, or like an FX6300 is the most you will ever need if you're not gaming. And then if you're like editing or you're rendering or doing something more intensive, you can look in towards the i7 range or maybe a Xeon if you really know what you're doing. So that about wraps up my guide on the CPU in your PC beginner's guide that I'm kind of doing over time. If you have any questions or if I didn't answer anything, go ahead and ask them in the comments. I will be down there to help and so will everybody else that has knowledge on the subject. But other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more content. Go ahead and leave a like and stay classy.